When the anointing is on you, as it is with all believers who have surrendered to the work of God, you will become a fighter. And we don't like that, do we? But it really, um, it, it kind of parallels with the United States and, and people say, well, I don't want to get involved. Well, too bad you're already involved. And Christians say that. Well, I don't, I don't want to get involved. I just want to be a secret, secret service Christian. And, and I just want to kind of, you know, I just want to kind of come to church and just, I don't want that too late. You're already involved. You're in the fight. If you are a child of God, you are against the works of the enemy and you are in a fight for your soul, for your families, for your children. You are in a fight. So fast forward now, I'm not gonna talk about the whole life of Samson, but Judges 16, 16. And most know, but I shouldn't assume that everyone knows, Samson was a mighty man of God, and, and pretty much anyone has heard of Samson that, that knows anything about the Bible, even unbelievers. And they know about Samson, they know about Delilah, they know the story, but Samson was anointed by God to fulfill a mission, to deliver God's people from bondage. So God anointed that person, even from his mother's womb. They, she took a Nazarite vow. There was a, so this is important, because you have to understand there was a consecration on Samson's life. He was consecrated because God said, I'm going to call you to do something. That means you have to be consecrated. You have to be set apart. So that's my challenge for you this morning, is that is your call as well. The, that's why the church shouldn't like, look like the world. We should, we, there's, a, there's a difference. I, I have to have, I, because of this anoint, anointing upon my life and your life, I have to be different. There's a, there's a consecration, there's a setting apart. Because when we set our, ourselves apart to do God's work, we're filled with the Spirit of God. When we don't and we're just led astray by the, the, the flow of the world, we are not filled with God's Spirit. And you know that's a miserable place to live, don't you? That's why I believe most Christians aren't fulfilled is they know there's something more. I know God's, I hear that a lot. I, I know God's called me to, and you fill in the blank, but I'm detoured to my destiny. I'm, I'm sidetracked. I actually took this out this morning, but I think it, it's relevant because I can't get it out of my mind. When you are anointed with the Holy Spirit, the world will hate you. The culture will be against you. And people say, but that's not true, Jesus. Everybody loved Jesus. Try this. Just go somewhere and say, did you know Jesus said he's the only way, the only truth, the only life. You can't get to God but through Jesus. You watch what happens. And when I read the New Testament, I try to get through it twice a year, and I, I, I keep coming upon these verses where Jesus rebuked entire cities because they didn't re repent. Oh, Chorazin, Bethesda. Oh, if the good works that were done in Tyre and Sidon were done in you, you would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes and humility. That's what that was. A, it was a humbling. He rebuked entire cities. He rebuked religious leaders. Yes, he was a friend of sinner, but he never caved into sin. 